Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about three tips you guys can use to improve your RPO defense overnight. I wanna say from the jump that I apologize for my voice in this video. I'm on the tail end of a little bit of a cold. My daughter just started daycare uh, last week, so naturally everybody in the house got sick. We're all on the tail end of it, feeling much better even if I don't sound much better. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna be talking about how to stop common RPOs. These are gonna be adjustments you can use from pretty much any defense in the game. I've gotten countless questions about this particular RPO, which is the the gun bunch strong offset RPO alert screen. And the adjustment that you guys are going to use for this type of uh, setup is actually quite simple. It's just going to be a base aligned and pressed hard flat. All right. So whenever you face this particular defense, you want to make sure that you are not just pressed because if you have this corner that is on the outside head up on that outside receiver, even if he's in a hard flat, there's a good chance that they are going to actually block him which is gonna make this throw to the outside quite easy. So a lot of players out there really rely on this. They're gonna throw this pretty much all the time if you don't give them a baseline and press look. Now, the cool thing about this is that if you are baseline and press with a hard flat and they decide to go ahead and throw this, this will be played nearly every single time. And if you guys have a flat zone knockout, this will never be a catch. In fact, there'll be a lot of times where you actually intercept this altogether. Now, from a standpoint of defending this RPO and then being equipped to defend all the other stuff in this formation, I've actually done content here on the channel specifically for the Bunch Strong meta. And I have a coverage that I will set up out of this that's more of a hybrid style coverage. So what I'll actually do with this is I'll just come out, I'll be base aligned, I'll press, I'll play that hard flat on the bunch side, but then I'll roll my coverage into basically a cover three shell. And then I will blitz my user to make sure that I get all these matching behaviors on the vertical hooks. But this all does rely on the hard flat on the right side being able to defend the bubble screen. And you see that's never going to be open. If you guys want the rest of the defense for the bunch strong, make sure you guys check out the channel, subscribe, hit that notification bell. The link for that video is in the description. Now, unfortunately, not all RPOs are created the same. Let's talk about, say, a trips tight end type RPO with a bubble screen. A base aligned and pressed hard flat is not going to be the counter to this particular call because the issue is that you're basically going to have the outside receivers in the trips alignment as blockers. So if your flat defender is basically the outside corner, he's gonna be blocked quite easily, which is gonna allow us to then throw the bubble screen, make a juke or two, and be out potentially for a one play score. So this is a problem that a lot of players struggle with is they try to use the same defense to defend all RPOs. And it's really important that you guys understand that there is a specific adjustment for bubble screens that we have talked about before here on the channel as well. So when you're dealing with a bubble screen out of a doubles or a trip style look, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your match coverage switch is on. Once your match coverage is on, choose a play such as cover four quarters, cover six, or a cover four palms. The reason that you wanna do this is that you're going to get a behavior out of your quarter flat, which is the pink zone that is found in this play, that is going to allow the base aligned pink zone to actually jump down in the flat. This will not be blocked, and it'll allow him to make a tackle on the ball carrier quite easily. Now, there are some differences in the way that a quarter flat will play a doubles look versus a trips look. That kind of falls back on match coverage rules in general. What a lot of players don't know is that quarters and palms have different rules against trips, and cover six will basically play the rule set of palms. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you that if I call this cover four palms and I base align that pink zone, against this particular RPO bubble screen that you may get a slightly different reaction of that particular player. Right there, it actually looked just fine. So if you guys are getting a good break on ball, he's not getting blocked at all, great, don't worry about it. But if you notice that your cover six or your palms is getting blocked for whatever reason, try the setup out of quarters and you'll be just fine. But again, all you really have to do to counter a bubble screen is base align a quarter flat. If you guys want to, you guys can actually base align tap this player and then unbase align and that's going to move your corners back out over the top of the trip side that way you're not getting misalignment on the outside receivers and you'll still get the good break on ball that you see right there again it's about where the player is basically lined up the baseline puts them in the same spot every time which allows you to get that break on ball so this is a great way to defend bubble screens but the truth is sometimes this tip will not work and that's going to bring me to my third example and this is probably the most important thing you guys can do with rpo defenses in the game altogether but before i tell you what that is make sure you guys are subscribed right here to the zan madden youtube channel i drop content monday through friday in the morning with shorts in the afternoon 
If you guys are looking for live content, I stream on Twitch Monday through Friday in the afternoon as well. Twitch.tv slash Zan Madden. And if you guys want everything that I run in game plan format, head over to my strategy website, gridirongameplans.gg. I talk about it in every video, so I'm not gonna talk your head off here. Make sure you guys go check it out. $9.95 a month unlocks the entire website. That's well over 230 vault videos, 11 offensive and defensive game plans. When all else fails and you're trying to defend an RPO, whether it's a bubble screen or a flanker screen, and you just can't get a zone to make a play on it, the adjustment you're gonna want to use is a second level player in man to man on the player that is receiving the screen pass. Let's say that I'm out here in this cover three base defense and I'm playing a hard flat. And for whatever reason, when I snap this ball, Polamalu is just not making the play or it's just not making you comfortable at all. This is a example where you guys will want to use a second level player in man to man on the bubble screen. The most common example of a second level player would be an inside linebacker. So when we take a look, these are first level defenders, all these defensive linemen across the front. These players on the second level of the defense, typically your linebackers, if you man up any of them on the screen player that you're worried about, they will ignore the RPO altogether and they will fly out on the bubble screen. That way, when they go and snap the ball, if they throw to this bubble screen, you'll see that Ed O'Neill is going to chase down that player. He's not going to be freezing or standing there looking at the run. He's going to be in a real good spot on this. A lot of players really struggle with this because they will sometimes say, oh, well, you know, I want to put this player in a zone and they put him right here. But for whatever reason, when this ball snapped, he freezes. You see right there that we didn't get a real good example of Ed O'Neill making that play, although Polamalu did. This example of manning up this player will automatically make him play the coverage assignment on this. You won't have to worry at all about him not being in a spot to make this play. If you guys put a secure tackler on your linebacker, this will be really, really a great adjustment for you guys to counter this, especially if you guys are dealing with those yak em ups or angry runs type players after the catch on these RPOs. Here's another example of an RPO, this one being an outside wide receiver screen, which is not a bubble. I'm gonna go ahead and run this exact same concept where if I'm expecting the outside receiver to catch this screen, I'm just gonna man up Ed O'Neill on him. That way when the ball is snapped, you'll see that he's gonna fly out there and he'll be unblocked and be able to make this particular tackle. So this is a universal conceptual tip. Again, the key is that you wanna make sure that you're putting second level players on this. A lot of times when you have these corners that are up in press alignment on that first level, it makes it really, really tough where sometimes, you know, if I man up Polamalu, that doesn't mean that he's going to be able to avoid that. You see right there, he did. Manning up players is really key. So if you guys can create your own hybrid defenses from a coverage standpoint where it's like, okay, these are the players that are most likely to catch an RPO in this formation. You man them up individually with a second level player. You'll be just fine while you're playing zone to kind of bracket any other route combo that it might be on that play. So use these three tips to improve your RPO defense. You guys can run this out of big nickel over G, dollar, four, three, even six, one, you name it. Hope this video reached you guys well. Again, I apologize for the hoarse voice in the video. I assure you that I feel better than I sound. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, this is Zan. Get in the lab and good luck.